right. This one I am so excited about. So excited about. Because I love finding discomfort. Like, I was actually thinking about that this week. I wanted to make a post around it, around how so many people are unhappy, I think, right now in their lives because they don't have challenge. They don't have purpose. They don't have passion. They don't have things. You guys, we need discomfort in our lives. We need to learn how to do hard things. As a society, I think we have lost all ability, not ability, we've lost the drive to challenge ourselves Mm -hmm. and to push ourselves because we want easy. We want instant gratification. We want, as we talked about before, you know, a pill or a supplement to be the quick fix and we don't want to do the hard work. Of course. That's and, what I, I mean. Like you guys, it's human nature and we've talked about this. It's, I think that like we need to understand it's not necessarily like ourselves only to blame, but the biggest thing is you need to understand and realize it and start doing something about it. And I think that this is the number one, in my opinion, the number one driver for the increased mental disorders and depression and anxiety. And like I am, I, I've talked about this before, maybe not so much on the podcast. I'm, I'm terrified for our youth today Mm -hmm. like the state of our world right now and how much and how disconnected our children are like i'm terrified for my kid it's not just other kids like i'm worried about my kid and i'm pushing more and more he only watches maybe maybe 30 to 60 minutes of tv a day if that because like he gets distracted but i am like no more no tea like come and cook with me let's go play with toys let's try and work on our writing like i am so concerned about how much i I heard a statistic on the pot this podcast and i were listening to the the average human right now spends 12 hours a day interacting with technology yeah social media listening to podcasts doing work on their computer phones like there is no more boredom it is pull out your phone look at your phone and I think that a lot of this is because it has become a comfort. It is like, we don't want to be bored. We don't want to inconvenience ourselves. We don't want to do hard things because everything else in life has become easy. Amazon, you don't have to even cook your own food anymore. You can get a meal prep service. Like, and I think that technology has done amazing things for our world, but there has to be a line that we draw. Like there has to be, or else we will, I think, you know what I think of? I think of um, Wally, the Disney movie, mm-hmm. where everyone's fat and overweight and they're all in their little machines yep. and they don't even walk anywhere anymore. I Another statistic, the average person gets an 4,000 steps a day. That's it. Yeah. 4,000 steps. I don't doubt it because you have to look at, especially in the last three years, what's happened with people being at home, quarantining themselves, mm-hmm. right? For a long time, they were afraid to go outside and go for walks. They had to wear their mask outside, right? There's been so much fear mongering mm-hmm. around, you know, just being active. Like, don't go to the gym. I mean, gyms and things like that have opened up now, but it's we're scared of seeing each other. We're scared of having that in-person connection. We're scared of, you know, doing activities the way that we used to do. I mean, I'll be honest. Let's think back four years. Um, what years is 2022, 2018. I started helping uh, the branch with Dr. Mm-hmm. Kathy here yep. in the Naperville moms group. And they would have 70 to 80 people at every function almost that they ever did. Yeah. I mean, this has got like 26,000 um, women in the Naperville area. And since COVID numbers are drastically down, people are talking back and forth, wanting to communicate, wanting to get together, wanting to socialize, but then three or four people were showing up. When I had lunch with her, you know, a couple of months ago, she's like, I'm not, you know, not even sure what we're going to do in terms of in-person events anymore because everyone says they want to be there, but then there's that fear of coming, mm-hmm. right? Or we're quarantining or we're testing or we're doing things like that. And, and again, we can't blame COVID for all of this by any means because this has been going on for decades, but now you've got, you know, Facebook and, um, <laughs> We have to talk about the the TV in a second, but you've got Facebook wanting to create these interactive, like virtual yeah. rooms. Meta, the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what's happening there is you're now putting these things on your face to participate with something virtually. You're not leaving your house. If you're playing a game, okay, maybe you might be getting a few steps in or dancing around in your living room, but we are not active the way that we were years ago, right? We don't go out and plant gardens and, you know, gather our food. We don't walk to the grocery stores. Like my sister lives in Copenhagen, Denmark, and I've traveled to a lot of different places in Europe. And 
it is crazy how little transportation that they require mm-hmm. in terms of just like their own cars. Like they do everything through public transportation. There's a lot of biking. There's a lot of walking mm-hmm. and we, we don't have that here. And if we do, it's, it's pretty abnormal. And then we have to look at, you know, the, um, the TV, the TV. that you can lick. Thank you. <laughs> the technology, <laughs> the technology that's coming out. If you guys haven't heard about this, Beck and I both heard about this on um, Andy Frisella's podcast a few weeks ago. And there is somebody who has created a TV. It's going to be $875 when it comes to market. Mm, I thought it was like thousands of dollars. I thought oh. it was like $20,000. Oh, I thought it was 875 Okay. okay wrong. I think it's really expensive. But anyways. I mean, it makes sense that it would be more expensive. Yes. But anyways, the, the premises of this is that there's a TV that has been created and designed to taste like the food that it's showing you. And you, you lick can lick it. The television, guys. How disgusting. We need to draw the line here. <laughs> we need to draw, like I said earlier, the line needs to be drawn somewhere. It's here. You, we cannot get to a place where we are licking televisions. I mean, calorie control, I guess. I don't know. But the you guys, another super scary t- statistic I read the other day, since COVID, now that like we have statistics on this, the number of obese children outweighs the number of healthy weight children. Mm -hmm. That is terrifying Mm -hmm. because that means disease is starting earlier and we are going to get to a place where Liz and I both have a friend that works with a lot of type two diabetics and a lot of people um, that are struggling with, you know, chronic health disease, heart disease, stuff like that. And he is saying the scariest thing is the number of people that are coming in in their forties with like early onset Alzheimer's. And not able to m- remember things because your brain becomes insulin resistant, not just your body and your fat cells, guys. Like we don't just get fat from type two diabetes. No, you start to become not functional. And this is terrifying for our children. And so the main purpose of this podcast is kind of to talk about how our society has moved away from discomfort 95% of time are spent indoors. Like we talk to a lot of clients and a number one thing that people say, it's too cold to go walking outside. We are meant to be in nature, you guys. We are meant to be outside. We are meant to deal with the different temperatures in nature. It is part of human abilities. Like that is what we have done. And back in the day, in prehistoric times, sure, there would be some period of like sitting around, but that boredom would then lead people to do productive things. Let's go hunt. Let's go find food. Let's go, you know, build shelter, whatever it is. Now boredom is like, let me pull out my phone. Mm. I've been sitting here for five minutes at the doctor's office. I can't possibly sit here any longer without doing something. So I'm just going to scroll through my phone. Well, it's like, imagine that you lost your phone. Like, I know what the feeling is. The first thing is panic. Oh my gosh, like, where is my phone? Right? Because then it's like, how am I going to get a hold of somebody in the case of an emergency? Or how am I going to communicate? Because, you know, we are very thankful for the technology. Absolutely. Our business is all online. But as I've talked about in this podcast, I'm trying to even separate myself more and more Mm -hmm. because I find myself just randomly picking up my phone at times that I don't need to. Right? And I'm not allowing myself to just sit down with a pen and a paper, good old fashioned pen and a paper yep. and write and be creative and study and highlight. And, you know, I'll be honest. So I'm in a course right now. I don't love how much of the reading is done online. I want a book. Mm-hmm. I want a pen and I want a paper. I want a highlighter. I want to take notes, make note cards. Maybe I'm old school with that. Um, I retain better. I zone out when it's on the computer. Mm -hmm. I've had to, that's what I do with, I'm in a different course and I'm, it's all lectures online. So I have a notebook and a pen and I literally write down what is on the slides. Even though I have access to the slides, I'm like rewriting what's on the slides because it allows commit to memory. Yeah. And that's why we're wearing our boob blockers because we're on the computer all the time. But 95% of time is being spent indoors. Wrap your mind around this. This is really sad. I mean, Beck and I, we love our walks. Maybe we are abnormal, but like both of us have been still walking in the wintertime. You strap on your boots. You hope to God you don't fall on the ice. And <laughs> I ate shit yesterday. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> so actually really funny story. Not funny, but it turned into a funny story. I went on a long walk um, late Sunday night when we got home from my parents. Because we were at my parents all day and I've been doing a walk every day. Got home at six o'clock. It was dark out, pitch black. And I told Nick, I was like, I'm going to go for a walk. I haven't gotten my walk in. I get back and I couldn't find my AirPod case. And I was like, oh, did it fall out of my pocket at some point? Like I was pulling my mittens in out of my pocket. It did. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? The next day I went on my walk again, found it. That's awesome. In the middle of the street, because I was walking in the middle of the street, it hadn't been ran over, and it still works. 
That's awesome. Amazing. But anyways, right after I called Nick and I was like, I found my AirPod case. And then I ate shit when I was on the phone with him. <laughs> I was like, dang it. Well, it's been very like black eyes, very thin layer here. But here's the thing is like, it's okay to be uncomfortable for 15 to 20 minutes mm-hmm. if you're going outside, right? Like it's going to be rainy. It's going to be cold. Sometimes you're going to be out there in the elements, but nature is so, so good for us. The biggest reason that I preach, not just, you know, physical movement and, you know, getting your blood flowing and things like that. The biggest thing that I preach for getting out in nature is your productivity and your ability to get away from all of the technology and actually come back and focus. It can help so much though, just with brain health, decreasing depression. Like one of the podcasts I was listening to, the guy refers to nature as our organic Xanax. And it's so true. So true. It's almost, there's been a lot of research studies that show that it's almost better than meditating. If you just get outside, go for a walk. Plus you get vitamin D. And I don't know about anybody else, but getting outside, I don't care how cold it is. The sunshine yesterday when I went, I was chatting with my sister. I ended up walking for like 30 minutes and I felt so energized by the time mm-hmm. I came back in because I got sunlight on my face because my face is the only thing exposed right now. But 95% indoor time. Guys, this is unacceptable in my personal opinion. And so yep. if you're wondering like, how do I start slow or get a dose of discomfort, put on your mittens, put on your boots, depending upon the climate that you live in, get outside and go for a walk. Yep. Now let's talk about another stat that I think is really crazy, but it's honestly, the more that I sat and kind of pondered this, I believe it to be true. 80 for 80% 80 for of the time that people are making food decisions, they are driven by emotions. Not hunger. The one thing that should drive food decisions for the most part does not. Mm -hmm. So let's think about this. 80% of the time you are making decisions from emotional, from an emotional state. This could be stress, could be boredom, could be that you don't want to feel into some of the emotions. Maybe it's anger. Maybe there's frustration. Maybe there's things that you need to take care of, right? From a mental perspective and really peel back the onion layers. But instead of actually addressing these issues, we eat. We eat and we suppress those emotions. Mm-hmm. Or you feel like you deserve it. It's been a hard day. It's been a hard week. I've been so good this week. I tracked all my food and I just deserve to have a night out. 80% of the time that we are consuming foods driven by emotions. This has got to change. Mm-hmm. If this doesn't change, we are going to continue to see younger deaths, higher obesity rates. I mean, I don't know how much higher you can get because we're, we're pretty high right now. And disease and dysfunction in the body, it's going to continue to get worse and worse because what do you eat when you are eating from an emotional state? You eat hyper palatable foods, right? Things that are refined carbohydrates, sugar, fried foods, all of those things that are very easy to overconsume. And then we wonder why we don't feel good, why we have brain fog, low energy, digestive issues, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, guys, we've talked about this plenty of times on the podcast. You are what you eat. You are what you give your body, you know, the ability to build from. And if you're only eating junk food, you know, or clean, I'm, excuse me, if you're only eating clean foods or healthy foods 20% of the time, you're not going to, you know, have a very good health profile. No, not at all. And I think a lot of people talk about like, well, I want to enjoy my life right? Like I, I, I want to enjoy food. I don't want to have to worry about thinking about what I, you know, putting food into an app or thinking about everything that goes into my mouth. And you guys, I would argue that one, the people that say that are hiding from something. They are actually not very happy. And them wanting to enjoy food is probably using food as a coping mechanism for that. Um, Cause I, we work with a lot of people that go through that, that think that food is like their enjoyment, but in reality, food is their band aid for the symptoms of depression, anxiety, not being happy or proud of themselves. And the other pieces, I think to feel that enjoyment of life, to feel that like, I want to go out and enjoy a meal with people. I want to elevate my experience with food. I think that there needs to be some type of a comparison here. There needs to be like, well, I enjoy this because normally I eat like this. And so this different food, this going out to eat is a different experience. It's elevating it. But if you're constantly eating whatever the hell you want, I don't think that like you're enjoying life. You're just ignoring the fact that you're not nourishing your body and you're not being healthy for yourself. And so I would argue to those people that I bet you would have a much different elevation of experience with food, that you would enjoy food much more when you have a contrast to it. 
when you don't just have your baseline is eating whatever the hell you want all the time. Like that's not enjoyment of life. That's just you being gluttonous. And I don't think that that provides very much happiness or proud moments for people in their life. I think that a lot of times people lie to themselves because I was this person. I used to lie to, I used to, lie to myself all the time. I would be like, no, I just, I deserve this. And I am happy with my body. I am happy with my choices. I am happy that I eat whatever I want. No, I was miserable. I was miserable and I was lying to myself about it, telling myself that I was happy to justify the decisions that I was making. You know what actually has made me probably happier than I've ever been? I chose to do this 45-day commitment. And you guys, it's not like I've never done hard things in my life. I have done a lot of hard things. I have I was a college athlete. I was an all-American. I've trained my body. I like I have pushed my body to its limits. What I have done recently in these past I think it's been like almost three weeks now. I've made these little commitments to myself of reading 10 pages a day, studying 15 minutes a day, going for this walk, and the pride that I have and the accomplishments that I've had from doing these hard things, these things that are uncomfortable. Like, I'm not going to lie. I brought my weight vest today to go for the walk with Liz because Liz and I are going to go for a walk. I'm like, no, that's the commitment I made for myself. Like, when I finish a day and I finish all those things, I'm like, God. I am so proud of myself. Like I have done these hard things, even though it was hard and I had to plan my day around them. They've given me purpose. They've given me productivity. They've given me more effectiveness in my life. And I've been a happier person. Like I've noticed a drastic change in my mood around Nick at night, around my kids, my patience with them. Like it has transcended into everywhere. And the main thing that has driven that is me getting beyond this discomfort of it of telling myself at the end of the day, I'm tired. I don't want to do this reading. I'm just going to no. like now it's no, I'm going to do it because I told myself I would. And I'm going to figure out a better way to do it tomorrow. So I'm not in this situation of 10 p.m. at night reading in bed when I actually want to go to sleep. Like it makes me be a better human. And I think that, that we've lost that in life because another big thing that I actually, when we were listening to the podcast that we kind of have based this off of is they talked a lot about um, like different uh, cultures and things have had like coming into yourself, like pa- rites of passage in life. And we don't have that anymore, really. Mm-mm. There's not like, unfortunately, a lot of people have moved away from religion. So there's not a lot of like first communions or things, you know, in Judaism, you have the uh, bar mitzvah and different, like these rites of passages don't happen anymore of like becoming an adult and creating purpose with your life. And so kids don't have purpose. They don't have passions. They don't have things that, that like excite them. And that for me, that was sports and like being better through sports and learning discipline through sports. They can be a lot of things though, but we just, now we are just stuck on technology and we are stuck on things that don't, we are stuck on comfort. Mm-hmm. Everything that is worth life, in my opinion, comes with discomfort. Everything in my life that I've been proud of has come from discomfort. And so I think we need to talk about like, this dose of discomfort that we need and that people continue to avoid. And it is a problem. Yeah. And I think too, you know, at the end of the day, like you guys have heard us preach nonstop about doing the hard things and about showing up for yourself and, you know, building momentum and creating discipline and not relying on motivation. And the thing is, is no matter what you want to accomplish in life, it's going to require some level of discomfort. Nothing, you know, in life is easy. There's hard to both ends of the spectrum. If you want to be overweight and unhealthy, that's hard. It's hard because you're unhappy, essentially, Mm -hmm. right? You might get instant gratification because you get to eat, air quote here, whatever you want. Um, But at the end of the day, when you're sitting in front of a doctor and you're being diagnosed with certain diseases or they're telling you, like, there is no and, if, or buts about this anymore, you've got to lose this weight, you've got to change Mm -hmm. something, that's really hard. You know what else is hard? getting up and going to the gym when it's three three to five degrees out in the morning at 5.30 in the morning and it's dark and you want to sleep, you know, and stay cuddled in your warm, cozy bed. But instead, you're getting up and you're showing up and doing the work. Those things are hard too. And at the end of the day, you have to decide which, where do you want to be, right? Do you want to be on the side that is happier and healthier and has, you know, improved physique? You've been able to lose the weight. Okay, well, then you're going to have to feel hungry sometimes. Okay. If you want to improve your fitness, you're going to have to train or train harder or level up your training. Maybe you're going to have to, you know, get a different program or you're going to have to hire a personal trainer. You're going to have to hire somebody to help you learn how to level up. If you want to improve your mental health, as I mentioned before, I think this is a really tough one. We talked about this, um, a few weeks ago as well as like, we ask our clients the hard questions 
Because if you want to improve your mental state and your well-being, you're going to have to peel back some of the onion layers. I just had a conversation with one of our clients recently. She's kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place. And the whole conversation, the premises of the conversation was, no matter which way you go, which decision you make, both are going to be hard in their own way. You have to figure out in your heart what you feel is right for you. You have to figure out in your heart, you know, thinking long term, where am I going to be the happiest? And I can either put in the work now or I can put in the work later. And I think that's one thing that many people aren't willing to do because they keep suppressing, they keep, you know, ignoring these things and they just keep scrolling on social media or, you know, ignoring the fact that they're overspending on their budget and that, you know, next month will be a better month. And they just kind of like wash under the, wash all of these things under the rug until it slaps them in the face one day. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying to you today is if you can make a decision to get this daily dose of discomfort, I don't think it should be like a dose. It needs to be a daily dose of discomfort to show yourself yes. that you can do hard things. Guess what happens? As Becca was saying, you come out on the other side, healthier, happier, improved. Like we tell this to all of our ladies when they come in, the very first module they go through in our courses is body being in balance and how they show up for themselves and how that is going to resonate in every other area of their life. Because you become more patient, you become kind, you become more optimistic, Ugh. which we need more of these days. Not saying that Beck and I don't complain or we don't have, you know, things that we mm. see as like, this is frustrating and this is challenging, but what's the silver lining here? Most people yep. don't see those things day to day because again, they're sheltering themselves, they're sheltering their emotions, and they're not challenging themselves to do the hard things, to stop drinking the alcohol, to stop picking up the chocolate at nighttime, to stop, you know, buying all this junk food at the grocery store because, you know, it just looks good or it's just their norm and to actually start making changes so that they can feel better mm -hmm. and that they can improve their health overall. And in turn, they improve your happiness overall. And so my question that I pose for all of you guys today is, when was the last time that you did something hard that was challenging? When was the last time that you made a commitment to yourself and you actually followed through? When was the last time that you took a technology break, yeah. created space, did a detox here, right? Got into a state where, like Becca was saying before, like you're bored and you have to get creative. You have to maybe learn a new hobby. Maybe you have to pick up a book. Heaven forbid. I And here's where I would say like, when was the last time, I'm going to expand on that. When was the last time you got dis uncomfortable and stuck it out? Because a lot of people get uncomfortable and then they stop. It's a resistance that they then shy away from. Oh, well this, you know, I tried, I tried that. It was really hard. Okay. Keep freaking doing it then because you probably need to do it because it's hard. Like that is the mindset that... I try to have on those days where think you guys, I talked a little bit yesterday um, on a mindset Monday around like, even when things are going well, it's chaotic. It is never perfect. It is never, you know, serene. Life is not that anymore. It is always a battle. Every single day presents me with stress, different things that I have to overcome, different things that challenge me. But at the end of the day, what I want to be able to say to myself when I go to bed at night is like, I handled that in the best way that I could. And if I didn't, you know what? I'm going to freaking learn from it because that's what life is. Like life is you get thrown shit in your face, you get knocked down, you get punched, you get kicked, and you keep getting up and getting better. But what happens is people, when they get knocked down, they go and hide in a corner. And they're like, well, maybe things will get better. Maybe a new, a new pill will come out that'll fix this problem. Maybe the doctor will tell me. Like, you guys, fix your own problems. Get uncomfortable. Figure out what you are not happy with in your life and change it. Because that no one can help you with. No one is coming to save you. No one is going to hold your hand through this. Like, you have to be the one to decide that you want that change. And a lot of people, sadly, aren't willing to put in that effort. They aren't willing to get uncomfortable. They aren't willing to do the hard things. But I promise you, if you do them and you stick them out, even when it's hard, you will become a different person. You will become a happier person. You will become a more fulfilled person because everything worth having in this life is hard to get or else we wouldn't have this problem of people being unhappy. If all of this comfort and all of this technology and all of these things were so great, why is our society suffering so much? It's because we stop doing hard things. The world has made it too easy to avoid hard things. So take a look back at your life. When were you the happiest? Probably when you accomplished things you couldn't, you didn't think you could accomplish. I think honestly, that's why childbirth and children, like that's why I love my children and they bring me so much joy because getting them here 
was really freaking hard. Like <laughs> pregnancy and childbirth ain't easy. And so I think that just elevates. And as much as I know my husband loves our children dearly, a mother knows it is different. It is different because that process is hard. Getting them into this world is hard. And caring for them is hard. And all of those things elevate your love for them. And I feel the exact same way about yourself and your body. When you ha- that is why I think some people get annoyed by people that are like super like proud of what they've accomplished physically because they've really worked at it and they're probably really freaking proud of it. And I love that of, for those people. And that's what I want for myself. So if you're in a place where you're jealous of those people or you're unhappy with your life, take a look at what you're doing that's hard. And if there's not much, maybe that's what you need to implement. Yep. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be hard one way or the other. Mm-hmm. It's exactly. just whether it's going to be hard and unhappy or hard and help healthy yep. and happy yep. and confident. Yep. So, all right, we're going to wrap it up. Have a great day. 